Hey everyone, this one is a little bit more of kind of a bloggy update video more than just an informational one, but I'm just super excited about it. I've kind of mentioned it a little bit here and there in previous videos, but now I can finally sit there and absolutely say it for reals, and that is, I got my snakes back, everybody. Seriously, I'm super excited for this. So this is a male adult Doomerals boa, boa. His name is James and his uh, girlfriend Lily. Uh, I, I had a number of years ago for quite a while. Um, picked them up from a somebody who honestly had lost interest in snakes and was not taking care of them. So we kind of got them for a bit of a steal slash rescue, I guess you could say. Um, along with Upsilon, our albino boa downstairs. But, uh, you know, when we had them for quite a while, I was trying to breed them, and they are just awful breeders, but we're not going to give up hope yet. Uh, failed four years in a row. But, you know, times kind of hit hard for us. You know, there was a lot of stuff going on in the world. Uh, we had a lot of vet bills. Our, one of our dogs, our Anatolian Shepherd Caboose. Um, hi, James, you squirrely little boy. Um, he has an autoimmune disease and it was in full tilt and we were going to different vets and specialists and he was under a lot of medication and it was basically costing close to $800 a month, uh, just for medication and vet bills and everything like that. And, you know, we didn't have nearly as many animals then, but we've kind of gotten to a little bit better spot, at least as far as cushion goes. And that's something you guys kind of have to think about when you're getting a new animal. It's like, are you prepared to take care of them financially if something's gonna happen, you know? But it was getting to the point where it was really tight. You know, these guys, you know, they don't eat often, but they still eat larger rats. Um, and those kind of cost a lot, even if you're buying in bulk and frozen. And uh, we kind of made the decision to downsize a little bit of our collection. And uh, through Facebook forums and stuff, we met somebody who uh, was really into boas as well. Um, that they were really interested in Doomerals boas, they were going to continue trying to breed them, and so we decided to let this person take both Lily and James, and I'll bring out Lily in just a second, um, and we, you know, said, okay, you know, this is something that this person seems like they're going to be able to take care of these animals, where, you know, we, we've already kind of made this decision, it's not, not something we want to do, but, you know, it's those tough decisions that we have to make, and at least I know this is going to a person who is going to take care of them. So let me, well, I guess, and James here, he is, so like I said, he's an adult male. He's, I don't know exactly how long he is. He's probably about six feet. He's a lot smaller than Lily, both in girth and length. And he's also a really squirrely kind of a boy. Um, he's been like that since we had him. I don't know, like he's, he doesn't have like a wobble or anything like that. He just likes to explore and he just kind of flops over sometimes, but he's perfectly healthy. Um, and I will talk a little bit more about that in a second when I go get Lily, but I'm just letting him climb because I'm just really excited to have my, my guys back, everybody. And this is Lily. She, like I said, you can kind of see pretty obviously, she, pretty obviously, that didn't sound very good. Uh, you, as you can see, she is definitely the larger of the two. And that's because, you know, with a lot of boids, the females are larger. So boids, that's not boas, because, you know, these guys aren't boa constrictors, they're ground boas from Madagascar. Um, but boids is in constrictor species, boas and pythons. Um, the females produce so many or large offspring, either eggs or live babies that the females just need to be bigger. But anyway, so we made that decision to, you know, part rehome our buddies and, you know, several years have gone by in the beginning of this year, I was just kind of cruising on Facebook forums and stuff like that as one does when you have nothing but reptiles and that's what you're interested in. And, man, you're heavy, little girl. Um, I'm looking along, and I see, it says, you know, for rehoming, and I see a Doomerals bow, and I go, wait, I think I know who that is. Is that, is that James? Is that James? Is that James? And I click on the picture, and I see that while they don't have as much distinction as some of the other boas when it comes to morphs and stuff like that, as far as I know, these guys don't have an actual true verified morph, although I've heard tale of a Xanthix out there, but I don't think there's any actual legitimacy behind that. Maybe it's just some really light individuals. But I could tell for sure because I had had them for a number of years and they're just such amazing animals. I went, that's Lillian James. And I click on the guy and I go to message and for sure it's the same messages from three years prior of the same person. And I message him and I go, hey, this is James and Lily. And he goes, oh, holy moly, it's you. 
And I, and you know, what had happened was times hit hard for him, just like it hit for us, you know, with 2020 and everything going on with him, he was having to downsize his collection and he was going around trying to vet people to take some of his animals that he had grown because, you know, he had gone through a similar situation as us and we ended up getting them back, which was absolutely amazing, incredibly awesome. It was really cool, you know, to catch up with him, hear that they were just as unproductive breeding for him as they, as they were for me. So at least I wasn't doing anything wrong, or at least we were both messing up things, but got them back. They went into quarantine. Um, as with all boa, cons oh, any boas that I get, although I guess not really with sand boas because it doesn't really happen, um, with all boas that I get, tumorals, BCs, BIs, whatever it is, even in, uh, even if I were to get uh, a, like an anaconda, which isn't going to happen because female anacondas get huge and I can't have them in where I currently live, um, you know, I would get them tested for arena virus or IBD. Um, I've mentioned it here and there in other videos. It's a very contagious disease. Um, they don't 100% know how it's spread, pretty sure through bodily fluids, but there's a lot of information out there. And honestly, I could do a whole video about that. But so because of that, I test every single one of these guys. Um, I take them to Aurora Animal Hospital for all of you Coloradans out there. That's my preferred reptile vet. Um, and we have them do blood or saliva swabs and we send them to the University of Florida, which I absolutely trust because they're kind of at the forefront for, you know, herpetological and zoological diseases. And we get them tested specifically for IBD and arena virus. And so what that means is that no matter what snake I get, it's going to end up costing about two to three hundred dollars more because of a visit, vet visit and shipping overnight, uh, you know, biohazard because it's blood materials to the to Florida and for the test in Florida. But they both came back clean and they are they have cleared quarantine. They've moved downstairs to the main uh, snake room. We are slowly working on upgrading enclosures and they're gonna get huge enclosures. Uh, my plan is actually to put them in four by four enclosures. So I know that most people think the standard for you know a large constrictor is six feet, but no one's ever kind of heard about a four foot in depth. It's a cube basically that I'm thinking about doing. It's like a, two, a four by four by either 18 or 24 inches high. So these guys are ground boas. They don't like to climb as much as boas, but they still will. And so what I want to do is I kind of want to make this kind of cube enclosure where they still will have plenty of room to entirely stretch out, but they will also, you know, kind of have, it'll be a little bit different shape. It'll actually have more square footage in general period. And hopefully it'll be tall enough that way I can utilize space for them to have like maybe a basking perch or something like that. But anyway, these guys cleared their health screen, got them back. Um, hopefully everything's going well for uh, the person who we got these from um, and everything moving forward with them. You know, things are kind of crazy for everybody these days, but I'm just really, really happy that I got my little, my, my, my little weirdos back. These guys make amazing, amazing pets. If I were going to recommend a large species of snake to get into, if you're thinking about bigger snakes, I would definitely say a Dumeril's boa might be the way to go. Um, they're just awesome, amazing animals, and they're really, really docile as far as, you know, a personality of a snake can go, but I'm not going to get too much into that. I already did the species spotlight of them, of my little male that I picked up, like, a month before I found these guys again, so now I'm sitting on a 2.1 ratio, so for any breeders out there, that's not the best ratio you want to have, but hey, maybe it's James is the problem, so I just have an awesome ambassador animal, I don't know, but... Anyway, thank you for letting me share this with you guys. I am just really excited to have these back. I don't like to do too many of these kind of vloggy ones, and they also really don't do as well. But I just really wanted to share how excited and happy I am that I have my little buttheads back.